What is up everyone, my name is Joseph and welcome back to Casually Competitive MTG where it's our goal to give you semi-competitive EDH gameplay content that's both fast paced and entertaining. We have an exciting double header for you for the final game of season 2, but before we get into the opening hands and deck introductions, let's go over a few quick channel promotions. First off, if you do like what we do and want to help support us financially, we have a Patreon as well as a YouTube join button. We greatly appreciate all of you who do help us out in this way. It helps improve the quality and frequency of these videos, so thank you. Next, if you are planning on buying cards in the near future, we have a TCG affiliate link in the description. Any cards you buy after clicking on that link just help out the channel at no cost to you. Next, if you do want to get to know us a little better and join the community, we have a Discord server available, as well as a Twitter if you want to keep up to date with us, and hear announcements like the fact that we're streaming every Friday now at 7.30pm EST on this YouTube channel, and announcements like we're going to be going to a few events this year primarily Magic Fest Toronto, as well as a CEDH tournament in New Jersey, which is currently being rescheduled, so check out the link in the description to stay on top of when this event will take place. Now with the promotional stuff out of the way, let's get into the opening hands and deck introductions. Going first, we have myself, Joseph, piloting Jaleva Nefalia Scourge. The goal of this Grixis deck is not to play Demonic Consultation, but rather to focus on Doomsday and Stormlines using Jaleva as a card advantage engine. The primary Doomsday pile in this deck is Gush as the first card, either a counter spell or a draw spell depending on your hand as the second, Thass as Oracle as the third, another draw or counter spell as the fourth, and a reanimate as the final spell. The goal of this pile to not only be a budget pile, but also if your Thassas gets destroyed and you don't have enough devotion, you can reanimate it with zero cards left in your library. Joseph's opening hand contains two islands, a blood crypt, an ancient tomb, an Ashiok dream render, a Ristic study, and a dark petition. Going next, we have the underdog of this pod, Adam, playing Feather the Redeemed. The goal of this Boros deck is to win through commander damage by ramping Feather out early and then buffing Feather up repeatedly with low cost instant speed buff spells that he can get back to his hand every turn. There are also multiple ways to get extra combat steps in this deck, allowing Adam to take out multiple people in a single turn. Adam's opening hand contained a Mountain, a Temple of Triumph, a Mana Crypt, a Chrome Mox, a Boro Signet, a Reverberate, and a Fell the Mighty. Going next, we have Jordan playing Muldrotha the Gravetide. The main goal of this deck is to play and then activate Hermit Druid to mill his entire library, and then flashback Dread Return to get Necrotic Ooze onto the battlefield, and then win with a Necrotic Ooze line. There is also a Demonic Consultation line in here, but the main goal is the Necrotic Ooze. Jordan's opening hand contained a Cavern of Souls, a Command Tower, a Dark Ritual, a Crop Rotation, a Demonic Consultation, a Talisman of Curiosity, and an Animate Dead. And finally, going last, we have Bill playing Marin of the Clan Nell Toth. The primary goal of this deck is to ramp out quickly while staxing and slowing down his opponents in order to assemble a combo with Protean Hulk and then finding a sack outlet for Protean Hulk to tutor up a series of creatures that allows him to win the game. Bill's opening hand contained an Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, a Command Tower, an Overgrown Tomb, a Mana Crypt, a Blood Pet, a Nature's Claim, and a Cabal Ritual. Now with the opening hands and deck introductions out of the way, let's get into the gameplay for game number one. Joseph starts off this game by drawing, playing an island as his land for turn, and then giving the turn to Adam. Adam draws, plays a mountain as his land for turn, and then for zero mana casts a Mana Crypt. He then taps the Mana Crypt to cast a Boros Signet. He then, for zero mana, casts a Chrome Mox, and when it enters, he imprints Fell the Mighty. He then taps all of his available mana to cast his commander, Feather the Redeemed. With a turn one Feather on the board, Adam gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan draws and plays a Command Tower as his land for turn, and then immediately gives the turn to Bill. Bill draws and plays a Command Tower for his turn, and then for zero mana, casts a Mana Crypt. He then taps the Command Tower to cast a Blood Pet, and with nothing left, gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and shocks in a Blood Crypt as his land for turn, taking two damage. He then taps two mana to cast a Dockside Extortionist, which, when it resolves and enters the battlefield, generates four treasure tokens. He then sacrifices three of these tokens to cast a Ristic Study. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps and loses his Mana Crypt trigger in his upkeep, taking three damage. 
He then draws and plays a tapped Temple of Triumph as his land for turn, scrying one card to the bottom. He then taps for two mana to cast a Cursed Totem, paying for the Ristic Study tax. He then goes to combat and declares Feather as an attacker at Joseph. Joseph declares no blockers, and in response to going to damage, Adam casts Run Amok, targeting his commander, giving Feather plus three, plus three, and trample. Adam does not pay for Ristic Study, so Joseph then draws, and Joseph then takes six commander damage. Run Amok then gets exiled due to Feather's ability, and then with nothing left, Adam goes to pass his turn to Jordan, and in his end step, gets Run Amok back to his hand. Jordan untaps, draws, and plays a Cephalid Colosseum as his land for turn, and then taps for two mana to cast a Talisman of Creativity, not paying for Ristic. With nothing left to do, he gives the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, and in his upkeep, loses his Mana Crypt trigger, taking three damage. He then draws, and plays an Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth as his land for turn, and with nothing left to do, gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and plays a Mana Confluence as his land for turn, and then he taps his lands to cast a Frantic Search, not taking damage from Mana Confluence due to tapping it for a black, since it is a Swamp. He draws two cards, discards two cards, and then untaps three lands. He then, for three mana, casts an Ashiok Dream Render. It resolves, and he then uses its minus one ability to mill Bill for four cards, and then exiles all of his opponent's graveyards. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, and in his upkeep, wins his mana crypt trigger, not taking any damage. He then draws his card for turn. He then goes to combat and declares Feather as an attacker at Joseph. Joseph declares no blockers, and in response to going to damage, Adam casts Run Amok again, targeting his commander and paying one extra for Ristic Study. The damage then goes through, Joseph takes six more commander damage, and Run Amok gets exiled until the end of turn. Adam then goes to pass the turn to Jordan, and on his end step, he returns Run Amok to his hand due to Feather's ability. Jordan then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and for one black mana, casts a Dark Ritual, not paying for Ristic Study. It resolves, he floats three black mana, and he then plays a Cavern of Souls as his land for turn, and when it enters, he names Elemental. He then uses his floating mana and taps Cavern of Souls to help cast an uncounterable Moldrotha. Again, not paying for Ristic Study. There are no responses to Moldrotha, it enters the battlefield, and with nothing in his graveyard that he can use, he goes to pass the turn to Bill. On Jordan's end step, Bill taps for one green mana to cast a Nature's Claim targeting the Cursed Totem, destroying it and gaining Adam 4 life. Bill then goes to his turn, untaps, and in his upkeep, loses his Mana Crypt trigger, taking 3 damage. He then draws and plays a Forest as his land for turn. He then taps his mana to cast his commander, Marin of the Clan Neltoth. Marin resolves and he then activates his blood pet, sacrificing it to float one black mana and getting an experience counter due to Marin's ability. With nothing to do with this mana, however, he decides to go to his end step, and on his end step, since he has one experience counter, he returns blood pet to the battlefield. Joseph then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and plays an island as his land for turn. He decides to tap for two mana to cast a merchant scroll. There are no responses and he searches up a snap to his hand. He then taps for two mana to cast this snap, targeting his own Dockside Extortionist. He makes a blue mana from Mana Confluence, so he loses one life. Snap resolves, Joseph untaps two lands, and then he retaps these lands to recast his Dockside Extortionist, which, when it enters the battlefield, generates five more tokens for a total of six. He then sacrifices five of his treasures for five black mana to cast a Dark Petition. It resolves, he searches up a card to his hand, and since he does have Spell Mastery, floats three black mana. With this three floating black mana, he casts a Doomsday. The Doomsday resolves, and he exiles all cards from his graveyard and library except for five. 
He then puts those five cards in his library in the order of his choosing, and then uses his last treasure to generate a blue mana to cast a Ponder. He looks at the top three cards of his library, puts them back in any order, draws a card, and then returns his two islands to his hand to cast Gush without paying its mana cost. He draws two cards and then for zero mana casts a Chrome Mox. When it enters, he imprints Limduel's Vault. He then, for zero mana, casts a Lotus Petal. He then taps his Chrome Mox for a blue and sacrifices his Lotus Petal for another blue to cast a Thassa's Oracle. When Thassa's enters the battlefield, since Joseph has five devotion and only two cards left in his library, Joseph wins the game off of Thassa's Oracle's ETB. From this first game, I think there's a lot of things that we can look into, but I want to hone in on some specifically. The first being that even with such an explosive start, a deck like Feather is still going to struggle against some of these other high-powered decks. This deck was suggested to us many times, so we decided to give it a try, and with Season 2 being more full of off-meta commander picks, we thought it'd be a good place for it. However, I think a game like this really shows how Boros struggles that, even with such an explosive start, relying on combat damage, even for a deck that does it so well, really has a hard time in these higher-powered metas. That being said, if the game did last one or two more turns, there definitely was going to be a few people losing the game to commander damage, so I do think that the deck can sit at these higher power tables, but the win rate will probably be lower than 25%, which would be the normal and expected win rate for a deck at a, a balanced table. That being said, I do want to talk really quickly about the most valuable card this game, which is going to be Dockside Extortionist, because that card is just crazy good. Being able to capitalize off of other players' explosive starts really just let me get the exact mana I needed in order to win off of Doomsday. So that card enabled a lot of things this game. That being said, I don't want to dig too deeply into game one because we do have another game to get into, so let's head into game number two. The turn order remained the same for the second game, so Joseph went first with his Jaleva deck, and his opening hand was an Exotic Orchard, an Underground River, a Mental Misstep, a Mystical Tutor, a Talisman of Dominance, a Limduel's Vault, and a Dark Petition. Going second was Adam, playing Feather the Redeemed, and his opening hand contained a Plains, a Soul Ring, a Ryle, a Tithe, a Crimson Wisps, a Double Cleave, and an Avon Mind Sensor. Going third is Jordan, playing Moldrotha, and his opening hand contained an Exotic Orchard, a Mana Vault, an Expedition Map, a Swan Song, an Entomb, a Demir Signet, and a Spell Seeker. And finally we have Bill on Marin. His opening hand was a forest, a nurtured peatland, a dryad arbor, a birds of paradise, a nature's claim, an entomb, and a wake the dead. Now with the opening hands out of the way, let's get into the gameplay for game number two. Joseph starts off game number two by drawing and playing an underground river as his land for turn. He then for zero mana casts a lotus petal. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Adam. Adam draws and plays a plains as his land for turn and then taps his planes to cast a Soul Ring. Priorities get around, and Joseph, knowing that if he can slow down the Boros player, he can almost take him out of the game, decides to pay two life to cast a Mental Misstep targeting Soul Ring. The Mental Misstep resolves, Soul Ring is countered, and Adam decides to pass the turn to Jordan. Jordan draws and plays an Exotic Orchard as his land for turn. He then taps for one to cast a Mana Vault. He taps this Mana Vault to help cast a Demir Signet floating one colorless mana. He uses this floating mana and the Signet to help cast a Felwar Stone. He then taps the Felwar Stone to cast an Expedition Map. Feeling pretty happy with how his turn one went, Jordan decides to give the turn to Bill. Bill draws and plays a Forest as his land for turn. He then taps this Forest to cast a Birds of Paradise. With nothing left, he goes to give the turn to Joseph. On Bill's end step, Joseph sacrifices his Lotus Petal for a black mana and then taps his Underground River for a blue, taking one damage, to cast a Limb Duel's Vault. He looks at the top five cards of his library, decides that the top five cards just aren't good enough, so he decides to put those cards to the bottom of his library and repeat the process, taking one damage. He repeats the process a total of four times, taking four damage and going a total of 25 cards deep until he finds a pile that he likes, 
He shuffles his library and puts those five back on top of his library in any order. He then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and plays an exotic orchard as his land for turn. He then, for two mana, casts a Talisman of Dominance. He then taps the Talisman for a Colorless to cast a Graph Digger's Cage. With nothing left, he goes to pass the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and in his first main phase, for one white mana, casts a Tithe. It resolves and he searches up a basic planes and a sacred foundry to his hand. He then plays this sacred foundry as his land for turn and pays two life to have it come in untapped. He taps the sacred foundry for a red to cast a faithless looting. He draws two cards and then discards two cards. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps and in his draw step takes one damage from Mana Vault. He then draws, and in his first main phase, pays 2 mana to crack his expedition map to search up an ancient tomb to his hand. He then plays this ancient tomb as his land for turn. He then taps his ancient tomb, taking 2 damage to help cast a spell seeker, which when it enters, gets him a dark ritual to his hand. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, draws, and plays a dryad arbor as his land for turn, and with nothing left, has to give the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and plays a watery grave as his land for turn, paying 2 life to have it enter the battlefield untapped. He then taps his mana to cast his commander, Jaleva. Jaleva resolves and when she enters the battlefield, everybody exiles the top 4 cards of their library, and Joseph puts the instants or sorceries from this pile to the side so he can cast them later when Jaleva attacks. With nothing else on this turn, he gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and plays a planes as his land for turn. He then taps his mana to cast his commander, Feather the Redeemed. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, and in his draw step takes 1 damage from Mana Vault. He then draws, and in his first main phase, taps for 1 black mana to cast a Dark Ritual. He floats 3 black mana, and then taps his Ancient Tomb, taking 2 damage and using this floating black mana, all to help cast his commander Moldrotha, floating 1 colorless mana. With nothing to do with this mana, however, he gives the turn to Bill. On Jordan's end step, Bill taps for 1 green mana to cast a Nature's Claim, targeting the Graf Digger's Cage. It resolves, the cage is destroyed, and Joseph gains 4 life. He then, still in Jordan's end step, taps for one black mana to cast an Entomb, searching up a Protean Hulk to his graveyard, and Bill then goes to his turn. Bill untaps, draws, and plays a Llanowar Wastes as his land for turn. He then taps for one mana to cast a Deathrite Shaman. With nothing left, and with a Protean Hulk just within arm's reach, he passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and plays a Wooded Foothills as his land for turn. He then pays 1 life to crack his Wooded Foothills to search up a Steam Vents to the battlefield, paying 2 life to have it enter the battlefield untapped. He then taps for 5 mana to cast a Dark Petition. He has Spell Mastery, so he will float 3 black mana, and he surges up a card to his hand. He then uses this 3 black mana to cast Ashiok Dream Render. It enters the battlefield, and he activates Ashiok's negative 1 ability to mill Jordan for 4, and then he exiles all of his opponent's graveyards. He then goes to combat and swings Jaleva at Jordan, and on declaration of attack, decides to cast Toxic Deluge, paying 6 life as an additional cost. All the creatures on the battlefield then die, Jordan decides to put Muldrotha to his graveyard, and with nothing left, Joseph gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and plays a Sun Home Fortress of the Legion as his land for turn, and with nothing to do, gives a turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, and in his draw step takes 1 damage from Mana Vault remaining tapped. He then draws, and taps his Ancient Tomb, losing 2 life, to help cast a Dance of the Dead targeting Moldrotha. Moldrotha enters the battlefield yet again, and he then decides to tap his mana to cast his Spellseeker from his graveyard. The Spellseeker resolves, however, because of Ashiok, he's not able to search his library for an instant. With nothing left, Jordan gives the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, draws, and plays a Nurturing Peatland as his land for turn. He then taps for 2 mana to cast a Sylvan Library. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Joseph. 
Joseph untaps, draws, and decides to activate Ashiok's negative one ability again to mill Jordan for four and then exile all opponents' graveyards. However, with nothing left and no land drop, he goes to pass the turn to Adam. Adam, on Joseph's end step, taps for three mana to cast an Aven Mind Sensor, making sure that nobody can search in this game. Adam then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and plays a Rugged Prairie as his land for turn. He then taps for five mana to recast his commander, Feather the Redeemed. He then goes to combat and swings the Aven Mind Sensor at Bill, who declares no blockers. Bill then takes two damage, and Adam decides to give the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps and, in his upkeep, decides to pay two mana to untap his Muldrotha with Dance of the Dead. He then, in his draw step, takes one damage from Mana Vault, and he then draws his card for turn. In his first main phase, he taps his Ancient Tomb for mana, taking two damage, to cast a Talisman of Curiosity. He then goes to combat and swings Muldrotha at Ashiok for six damage. Joseph declares no blockers, and Ashiok then dies. With nothing left, Jordan passes the turn to Bill. Bill untaps and draws two extra cards due to Sylvan Library. He decides to pay four life to keep one extra card, however with nothing to do on this turn, he gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and plays an island as his land for turn. He then taps for six mana to recast his commander, Jaleva, and when she enters the battlefield, everybody exiles the top six cards of their library due to six mana being paid to cast Jaleva. Joseph again puts the instance and sorceries aside to later cast, and then passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and then pays two mana to cast a Boros Signet. He then pays two more mana to cast a Talisman of Conviction. He then goes to combat and swings the Aven Mind Sensor at Bill, and Feather the Redeemed at Joseph. Joseph, deciding that he really doesn't like the cards exiled under Jaleva, decides to declare Jaleva as a blocker for Feather. There are no other blockers, the damage goes through, Jaleva dies, and Bill takes two damage. Adam then goes to pass the turn to Jordan. On Adam's end step, Bill taps for two mana to cast an abrupt decay targeting the Dance of the Dead. In response, Jordan taps for one black mana to cast an Entomb. Due to Aven Mind Sensor being on the battlefield, he can only search the top four cards of his library, so he does so and decides to put an Echo of Eons into his graveyard. With nothing else, Abrupt Decay resolves, Dance of the Dead is destroyed, and Jordan decides to put Modrotha back into the command zone. He then goes to his turn, untaps, and in his draw step takes one damage from Mana Vault remaining tapped. He then draws his card for turn, and then taps for 4 mana, taking 2 damage from Ancient Tomb, to cast an Aether Flux Reservoir. With nothing left to do, however, and missing his land drop, Jordan goes to pass the turn to Bill. In response to moving to end step, Adam taps his mana to cast Defiant Strike, targeting Feather the Redeemed. He essentially draws a card, and then on Jordan's end step, he returns Defiant Strike to his hand. Bill then goes to his turn, untaps, draws two extra cards due to Sylvan Library, and decides this time to pay 8 life to keep all three. He then for 0 mana casts a Mana Crypt. He then, for 1 mana, casts a Soul Ring. He then takes 1 damage from Nurturing Peatland to help produce enough mana to cast a Buried Alive. The Buried Alive resolves, and Bill looks at the top 4 cards of his library due to Aven Mind Sensor, and decides to put an Apprentice Necromancer and a Carrion Feeder into his graveyard. With nothing left, Bill goes to pass the turn to Joseph. In response to moving to end step, Adam decides to recast his Defiance Strike, targeting Feather to essentially draw another card, and then Bill moves to his end step and Adam puts Defiance Strike back into his hand. Joseph then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and plays an Ancient Tomb as his land for turn. He then, for 8 mana, taking 2 damage from Ancient Tomb, decides to recast his commander again and this time when it enters, everybody exiles the top 8 cards. Joseph separates the instants and sorceries and then decides to pass the turn to Adam. On Joseph's end step, Adam yet again casts Defiant Strike, targeting his commander. He draws a card, and on Joseph's end step, he puts Defiant Strike back into his hand. Adam then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and plays a mountain as his land for turn. He then taps his mana to cast a Sunforger, 
and then tap some more of his mana to equip Sunforger to his commander. He then goes to combat and decides to swing Feather at Bill this time and even Mind Sensor at Jordan. There's no blockers declared. Jordan takes two damage and Bill takes seven commander damage. With nothing left, Adam passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps and in his draw step takes one damage from Mana Vault remaining tapped. He then draws and takes two damage from Ancient Tomb to generate two colorless mana to help cast an Intuition. He gains one life on cast from Aetherflux and then Intuition resolves. Again, due to Avid Mind Sensor, looks at the top four cards of his library, picks three of them, and decides to have Bill choose which one goes to his hand and which ones goes to his graveyard. The cards are a Nature's Claim, a Woodland Cemetery, and a Soul Ring. Bill decides to give him a Woodland Cemetery, and Jordan then decides to play this Woodland Cemetery tapped as his land for turn. Jordan then, for three mana, casts Echo of Eons. Jordan gains two life on cast from Aetherflux Reservoir, and then in response to Echo, Bill taps for one green mana to cast an Autumn's Veil. It resolves, and then priorities get around on Echo again, and Adam taps for two mana to cast Teamer Battle Rage targeting Feather, looking to save it for his next turn. It resolves, and it gets exiled under Feather's ability. Echo of Eons then resolves. Everybody shuffles their graveyard libraries and hands together, and draws seven more cards. With a fresh grip of 7, Jordan then pays 0 mana for a Mox Opal, gaining 3 life on cast, and then for 1 mana casts a Soul Ring, gaining 4 life this time. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Bill. Bill untaps and in his upkeep loses his Mana Crypt trigger, taking 3 damage. He then draws 2 extra cards due to Sylvan Library and decides to take 4 damage to keep 1 extra. He then plays a Swamp as his land for turn, and then taps his mana to cast a Wish Claw Talisman. He then taps his mana to cast a Sakura Tribe Elder. He then cracks the Wish Claw, paying one mana to look at the top four cards of his library, really looking for an answer to the Avon Mind Sensor at this point, but it's one of these cards to hand and then shuffles his library. He decides to give the Talisman to Jordan after he searches. He then, with nothing left, gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and plays a Forbidden Orchard at his land for turn, and then taps for two mana to cast a Fail War Stone. With nothing left, he goes to pass the turn to Adam. On Joseph's end step, Bill taps for two mana to cast Abrupt Decay, targeting Feather, taking two total damage from his Pain Lands. Feather is destroyed, and Adam then goes to his turn. Adam untaps, draws, and starts his turn by playing a Mana Confluence as his land for turn. He then taps his mana to again recast his commander. He then taps for two mana to cast a Rest in Peace when it enters, exiling all graveyards. He then goes to combat and swings his Avon Mind Sensor at Bill for two damage. Bill has no blockers, takes the damage, and Adam then goes to pass the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps and in his draw step takes one damage from Mana Vault remaining tapped. He then draws and taps his mana to cast Aristic Study. He gains one life on cast from Aetherflux Reservoir and it then resolves and he then taps for some more mana to cast a Hermit Druid and gaining two life from Aetherflux Reservoir. He then pays one mana to crack his Wishclaw Talisman to look at the top four cards of his library and put one into his hand. He decides to give the talisman back to Bill. He then for zero mana casts a Lion's Eye Diamond, gaining three life from Aetherflux Reservoir on cast, and then with nothing else, passes the turn to Bill. Bill untaps and in his upkeep wins his mana Crypt Trigger, not taking any damage. He then draws two extra cards due to Sylvan Library and decides to not lose any life and only keeps one of them. He then plays a Tainted Wood as his land for turn, and then pays one mana into his Wishclaw Talisman to essentially just impulse at this point, I guess. <laughs> he looks at the top four cards of his library, puts one into his hand, and then mistakenly puts the used up Talisman into his graveyard rather than leaving it on the battlefield. He then pays 2 mana to cast a Diabolic Intent, sacking his Sakura Tribe Elder as an additional cost, paying the Ristic Study, and then it resolves and he looks at the top 4 cards of his library and puts 1 into his hand, and then shuffles his library. He then, for 2 mana, casts a Collector Oof. He pays 1 extra for Ristic Study, 
And then, in response to the oof, Joseph decides to tap for 5 mana to cast an ad nauseum, and then decides to pay 1 extra for the Ristic Study tax. Joseph continues to reveal cards, losing life, until he goes down to 6 life. He ended up with a total of 15 cards off of his ad nauseum. And then, the Collector oof resolves, and Bill continues to his turn. He taps for 1 mana to cast a Land of War Elves, not paying for Ristic, allowing Jordan to draw. He then, for one more green mana, casts an Arbor Elf, again letting Jordan draw to hopefully draw him into an answer. With nothing left to do, Bill passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and taps for two mana to cast Snap, targeting Collector Oof. He does not pay any extra, Jordan draws a card, and then in response to the Snap, Jordan pays one blue mana to cast a Swan Song, targeting the Snap. In response to the Swan Song, Joseph pays 2 life to cast a Mental Misstep, again not paying the extra, allowing Jordan to draw. The Mental Misstep then resolves, Swan Song is countered, and Snap bounces Oof to Bill's hand. Joseph then untaps 2 lands. Joseph then takes 1 damage to generate a blue mana to cast a Hide Tide, letting Jordan draw off of Ristic Study. He then taps for 3 black mana, taking another damage to cast Doomsday, not paying for Ristic Study, allowing Jordan to draw. I want to make a quick note here that while we were playing the game, we did forget the fact that there was an Avid Mind Sensor on the battlefield, even though it affected the game almost every single turn cycle since it was played. However, a Chain of Vapor was revealed off of the Ad Nauseum, so this could have been cast and there's plenty of mana to do so, and none of Joseph's permanents need to remain on the battlefield, so a copy Chain of Vapor wouldn't affect his board. So although there is a slight gameplay error here, it could have been legally resolved without impacting the game. The Doomsday resolves, he searches for 5 cards, exiles the rest of his cards from his graveyard and library, puts those 5 cards in any order, and then plays an island as his land for turn. Joseph then taps his mana to cast a Mind's Desire, Storm Count 7. He does not pay the extra, Jordan draws a card, and Jordan then decides to tap for 2 mana to cast a Tainted Pact, gaining 2 life from the Aetherflux Reservoir on cast, and hoping it resolves to look for an answer to all of these Mind's Desire copies. In response to the Tainted Pact, however, Joseph, for one blue mana, casts a Fluster Storm, this time paying the extra for Ristic Study, and targets all nine copies of Fluster Storm at Tainted Pact. The Tainted Pact is then countered, and Joseph shuffles his library, exiles the top card, and continues to do this for each of the cards in his library, and then, with no cards in his library, he casts one of the cards that was exiled with Mind's Desire, Fassa's Oracle. It resolves, and when it enters the battlefield, since Joseph has no cards in his library, Joseph wins the game. This second game was able to show a bit more of what the other decks at the table were able to do, and it was a pretty good example of what pieces shut off those decks as well. Both Jordan and Bill were threatening either an early win or just insane value plays fairly early, and through the Ashiok and other graveyard hate pieces, Adam and myself were able to hold the graveyard players in check until we were able to establish some type of board presence. An example of this was when Bill cast Entomb to search up Protean Hulk to his graveyard. I personally knew that I probably could have made something work with a Doomsday off of that Dark Petition in another turn or two. However, I did also know that Bill has an immense amount of spells that can reanimate Protean Hulk and instantly kill him, so I didn't want to take that risk. And I did it before moving into combat because I did want to make sure that the spell that he has in there that only works during combat didn't get to go off, and after the game we found out he actually had that in hand. So getting Ashiok before moving to combat and wiping the board ended up saving the game. And on that note, let's talk about the most valuable card for this game, and I'm actually going to give it to two cards because they have a very similar effect, but Ashiok and Avon Mind Sensor. The anti-searching effects that were present in this game really slowed down Jordan and, in the grand scheme of things, probably slowed them down more than the graveyard hate pieces. There were so many tutors played purposely into Avon Mind Sensor just to find something to deal with it, and in the end, they weren't able to find anything, and that card really shut down a lot of what they tried to do. Now, I would like to give kind of a secondary MVP to all the graveyard hate pieces with Graph Digger's Cage and Rest in Peace, because they also did slow down those other two decks. However, 
their time in the game was a little bit short-lived, and the Avian Mind Sensor and Ashok really were powerhouses in this game overall. That all being said, that does wrap up the post-game discussion for Episode 4 of Season 2. And now with all the seasonal games done, we'll be moving on to our finale. Our finale will include Nekusar from game number 1, Aloro from game 2, Amanatsu from game 3, and Jaleva from game 4. So if you're excited for that, that should be out in the next week. Remember to vote for your favorite commander by using the little eye on the top right of this video, and we'll be doing another fan favorites video very soon after the season ends, so if there's a commander that you didn't think performed that well and want to see them again, be sure to vote for it. That all being said, that is all we have for this video. We hope you did enjoy it. Like I mentioned before, I am Joseph, this is Casually Competitive MTG, and we will see you next time.